So we use radios in the garage and on track fundamentally for two reasons. One, we have all sorts of busy engineers and mechanics running around and doing their jobs in a very dynamic way. It would be very inconvenient to be plugged into something more permanent. And two, because it's a very high noise environment at the racetrack. When we fire up the car in the garage, it's about 120 decibels, so the so same sort of level as a jackhammer in the garage. And anyone not wearing a headset is just wiped out. In the garage, I mean, it's generally very loud, but obviously when cars are on track, it's impossible to hear each other. The radio is blank out a lot of the noise, naturally, so you can actually hear people having conversations. If we look at engineers or mechanics in the garage, they have a series of intercom panels in front of them. Those panels give them the capacity to talk to all sorts of experts throughout the garage, in the back in our mission control area, and even back in Brackley and Bricksworth where the experts are working on individual systems. So a wide variety of uh, flexibility and the capacity to speak to exactly the expert you need in that moment, and then broadcast that critical information back out to the driver. They help create the picture, and also there's a lot of things that happen with the, in the car, whether it's having to turn off sensors, whether it's having to make engine strategy changes. We're speaking to the drivers through a network and radio system that's connected all around the track. So you imagine receivers and antennas positioned all around the track every 200 meters, and the car is constantly connecting and disconnecting to those as it goes around the track. But there are so many other aspects that are going on in the race that if I'm not updated, then I would be kind of in no man's land. And what that gives us is the chance to have a conversation in a way we call full duplex, which means the driver and the engineer can chat back and forth to each other very conversationally as if they were sitting at a table together. What the driver's hearing is really only the tip of that audio iceberg. What's happening under the surface is hundreds of conversations about all the systems on the car. All of that information and all of that noise filters all the way up to the race engineer, and in the end, it's them who passes on the really critical jewels of information to the driver on track. The information that Bono sends to me is vital for me to be able to do my job. Particularly in the race scenario, I only have the steering wheel and what's ahead of me in view. We do have a backup radio system on the car, so in the case of a failure of the primary system, we could fall back on that. If they both went wrong, we fall back on old school items like the pit board that we hold out to give a signal to the driver and the driver waving or giving us uh, signals from his steering wheel. So I have almost like stage earpieces on. For me, it's damping out the noise of the engine and the air, which is incredibly loud. And then I have a mic in the helmet, so I press a button and that engages me being able to speak to Bonham. The number of people who can speak to the driver on track is very limited, and we try and push everything we can through the race engineer. Each driver is different. Some of them want to hear every detail about the car. Some of them don't want to know anything when they're on a fast lap. And one of the real skills of the race engineer is knowing when and how to speak to the driver.